Hi, I'm Chef David McMillan. I want to thank you for coming. Today we're going to be doing sautéed halibut with clams, black beans, chorizo, and garlic. One of my favorites. When you work with garlic, the different way you cut it gives you a very different flavor. If you flatten it, chop it, and get it very fine, it has a tendency to get a very sharp, acrid flavor, which fits good pasta dishes. The sliced, thin garlic like this gives you a really sweet, nutty flavor. If you take garlic like this and just flatten it, that gives you a really rich, nutty flavor. You brown that up, and it really releases a lot of great flavors into it. Now, these aroma tomatoes, we're going to rough cut some of these. Now, in season, use your favorite tomato. You want one that's not overly ripe or overly sweet. You, know, you want it to still have some body after you cook it. These are going to go through a quick stewing process, but you don't want them to melt completely. You want to still have it identifiable. It's fun to play with these when the season progresses. You know, you've got the great heirloom tomatoes, the black, the brandy wine, which all have a great deep depth of color. You can add the yellow tomatoes, which bring a lot more into it as well, too. All right, next we're going to chop some flat parsley. Italian parsley, flat parsley. It's easy. It has a great flavor. You know, the curly parsley is what you see in the old steakhouses, and it's, it, it just doesn't taste right. Flat parsley's got a rich, oily content. It keeps its color very well, and it tastes good. So we're just going to give this a real quick rough cut. It does not, this is considered, a, I would consider this a very rustic dish. You know, it's fun to eat, people love it. it. You know, it's one of those things people don't normally think about is what they're going to have for dinner, but there's no reason not to. So now we're going to move and start sauteing. So the first thing we're going to do for our dish is saute the garlic. We're going to use some olive oil, get our pan hot. You don't need to use an extra virgin olive oil, just a regular basic olive oil is good. The extra virgins break down in the heat and you don't want to waste that money if you don't have to. First thing, we want to get that little brown, a little nutty. So once the garlic gets brown, we're going to add our chorizo to it. It'll take, if your pan's hot and small, you know, you can get this garlic browned in about, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. This is a bigger pan, it's taking a little bit of while. Then we're going to add our chorizo to it and start letting it render down. By render down, what that means is we want to have some of the fat cook off and meat start to darken up and you can separate it out. If you ever worked with fresh sausage before, you know it's tough. It kind of sticks together in clumps and if you're not careful, it'll be too big. We want to have this really broken down, almost the size of the beans that we're going to add to it as later. Now chorizo, there's several different types of chorizo. We use uh, a mixture of pork and beef. In general, we make our own. Try not to buy the inexpensive. You'll see that it has entirely too much fat for you. You can also buy chorizo, the hard chorizo that comes from Portugal and Spain. This is a fresh one. And what's great about that, those are much more like salamis, but they're still chorizos. But they don't render out the fat you're looking for, and it'll stay sort of dry and chunky. It'll taste very, very good, but it won't really give you what we're trying to get here. All right, what we're going to do now is add tomatoes. Let these stir in a little bit. Like I said before, we won't, don't want them to totally melt away. We'll be able to identify it. And now we'll go ahead and add some black beans. It's fine if you have a spiced black bean. It's fine if it's fairly neutral. Black beans take a fairly long time to cook. If you don't really want to stay around and do that, it's a good time to buy a canned product. Progresso makes a good one. Drain it, rinse it, get some of the extra liquid off and some of the silt that builds up. All right, now we're going to add our clams. I like cockles. I like manila and I like cherry stones. Cockles and manilas are very, very small. They cook quick and they're very sweet. These are the cherry stones. These take a little longer, but they're bigger and you know, they're very satisfying. They got a nice chunk to bite. Now we're gonna go with white wine. And this is going to give you some nice liquid. You want a nice soupy sauce. You don't want it to turn into a really chunky, thick stew. So the wine and the juice that's going to come out of the clams when they open up is going to give you what you want. I'm going to move this to another burner. I'm going to get another pan going, and we're going to start our fish. Halibut's one of my favorite fish. This particular fish came off the coast of Alaska. During the summer months, or the, the spring and summer months, you can get it from the eastern seaboard, George's Bank on down, and then you get it from Alaska. It's just great white, fresh, crystalline fish, good fat, fat content. During the winters, it comes out of Iceland, and it's usually frozen and processed before it comes to the U.S. They may just call it refreshed in the store, but it's something to be aware of. Now, I like to cook the fish with the skin on. 
fish, it stores predominantly its fat on the outside of its body, outside of the meat, in between the skin. But by leaving the skin on, you don't have to eat it, you saute the skin, and what that does with that internal fat, it bastes the meat from the inside, so it stays really good. And if you're squeamish about the skin, that's fine, take it off. But if you're not, you know, some of them are very fun and crispy to eat. One second, I'm gonna put a little bit of foil on top of this because I want those clams to steam. So just a loose cover is all it's really gonna take. I'm gonna turn the heat down. I've got my pan preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and oil it up. Again, I'm using some olive oil. And then I'm gonna season the fish lightly, even the skin side, in case you change your mind. Go ahead and season it, it's not gonna hurt. Now if you can look at these fish fillets, or I'll show you, you'll see I've split them with the tip of a knife. When you have a thicker skin fish, it'll tighten up, it can cause the fish to curl. I'm sure you've seen that somewhere in restaurants or had it happen to yourself. This allows that tension to break and it doesn't really happen. So salt and pepper, and we're gonna start them skin side down. Now that it's been flipped over, we'll go ahead and season the other side. You want it at a medium high heat too hot and you're going to burn the outside of it before the inside, just like steaks. Yeah, you want to get a nice sear on it, but you don't want to char it and get that sort of evil hot pan, hot oil taste. So it's a little game you get to play. Check our clams real quick. See how well those are doing? Now, as I said, you want to keep it soupy. You don't want it to be overly stewy and chunky. If it starts to get too thick, feel free to add a little bit of water, add a little bit of chicken stock. There's so much flavor coming out of the clams and that chorizo and garlic that you're not gonna dilute it and make it boring at all. So at this point, I'm actually gonna probably add a cup. You can see they're starting to open right now, and that's what we're looking for. Go ahead and put the foil back on just briefly. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to that and turn the heat way down. Now at home, you can finish this on the stove top, a low to medium heat, just let it gently cook, or you can put it in the oven about 350 degrees and let it gently cook that way. Now, there's a little bit of helping you can do with your clams. The rule of thumb is, if the clam doesn't open, it's not good. But some of them will open partially, and they just need a little bit of help with the tip of a knife or the tip of your tongs. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is remove the clams that have opened up so one, they don't overcook. Two, it's easier for me to keep track of the ones that I gotta help and work a little bit. And then when we go to present the plate at the end, I'll be able to take the clams and put them around in a nice artistic pattern. So if you go with the manila clams or the cockles, which are about half this size, if not even smaller, this becomes a much, much, much quicker dish. These clams take about a good six minutes or so to get to be done and open. They have very, very thick shells, and it just takes a while for that heat to penetrate and create the steam, which is basically what you're doing when you're cooking clams like this. Now, the best thing to serve this with when it's all said and done, make sure you've got a good crusty French or sourdough bread. All right, what I'm gonna add now is some chopped parsley to this. And we're actually ready to plate this now. All right, well now comes the great easy rewarding part. First we're gonna plate it, which is, it, it's a great simple plate to do. We're gonna spoon some of our sauce, and you see how that's gotten? It's just a beautiful chorizo-y color, that reddish brown. You can still see the tomatoes, the pieces of garlic and the black bean, and it's studded with some of that parsley. And you know, the best thing when you're doing this right now is just the smell of it, it just, it just pops. So now we're gonna transfer our fish. The nice thing about this too is you don't have to use a huge piece of fish. You know, this can be fairly economical because you've got so much substance from the beans and the sausage and the clams that you don't have to spend all the money on fish. And now we have our clams. And you can use as many or as few as you want. I love the shells. You know, it keeps the clams warm. It adds some drama and some height to whatever you're working with. I think it just looks good. And we'll take one little piece of flat parsley just as a simple garnish, and we're ready to go. Now, if you want to do this for a buffet or a large group of people as well, you take a platter, you do this exact same thing. You can lay the beans out into a deep, you know, gratin dish or, or something sided, and then you lay the fish on that and scatter the clams around, and it'll just work really well, and people are just going to ooh and ah. Now, here we are. That is our finished plate, the sautéed halibut with chorizo, garlic, and black beans. 
And the wine I recommend with this is an Albarino. This is a grape from northern Spain. It's bright and crisp and I enjoy it. It cuts the fat, the unctuousness of these beans and the sausage and garlic. This particular one is from Randall Graham with Bonnie Doon Winery out in Northern California. I've been a family friend for a long time. It's a perfect match for this. Good stuff. Well, enjoy it. Actually, I'm going to enjoy it. You guys can wait. Cook your own. Wish you were here. You wish you were here. <laughs>